Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Emily um, and today I'm starting this vlog to kind of talk about our infertility journey. Well, first of all, nobody thinks that they're going to be dealing with infertility. You spend your whole life trying not to get pregnant and then you're like, okay, I want to have babies. And then we found out that it was way harder for us. So I'm 24, my husband is 31. We got married in April of 2017 and we decided to start trying right away. I actually was ovulating on our honeymoon. We had an 11 day cruise to Hawaii and I remember I like cried. I was like, oh my gosh, we did it. We conceived a child. And I like stopped drinking for the rest of the cruise. I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm having really vivid dreams and I'm nauseous and I never get nauseous and it's just kind of funny to like look back and think about how bright-eyed and bushy-tailed we were about the whole situation and that was 19 months ago so here we are we're on month 19 of trying to conceive and starting in August of 2018 so now two months ago um, we were officially referred to an infertility specialist, Dr. Christine Mansfield at Arizona Reproductive Institute, and she is incredible. I can't say enough good things about her. If you guys are in the Arizona area, I cannot say enough good things about this place. We're military, so we had to jump through a bunch of fun insurance hoops. I had to go to my PCP, and then to my OB, and then finally get a referral to ARI. And what I like about them is they're totally comprehensive. They tested both my husband and I, like all these different facets. And we sat down with her and she was like, you know, my job is to find something. We want to find something. We don't want you to have unexplained infertility. And she was like, and most of the time, you know, I can find something and we can treat it. I have longer cycles and they're regular-ish, anywhere from like, well now, 27 days to 36 days, which now looking back on these 19 months, I'm like, oh, maybe that's not that regular, but I do ovulate. I know there are women out there that don't get their periods for long amounts of time and very irregular periods. So we did full comprehensive test for my husband. That was just semen and blood. The good stuff that was it for me they had a number of tests we did blood work to test on just my regular regular blood work I don't know I'm not a doctor we also opted in for the genetic screening which I'm really glad we did because turns out I'm a carrier for here we go congenital glycosamine <laughs> Congenital disorder of glycosamine, I think it is. Please don't quote me. I'm a carrier for it, so my husband would also have to be a carrier for our child to have that issue. It's rare, but it is fatal to the child. If Matt and I were both carriers, our child would have a one in four chance of having this disease. So because I showed up as a carrier for that, we decided to opt him in for genetic screening as well. He came back fit as a fiddle, clean as a whistle, good for him. They test on 274 genetic diseases and didn't get a single one. So in addition to being a carrier for this one d fatal disease, I actually came back positive for a disease, which means I have this disease and I was like, uh, what? it's called Gittleman syndrome. One in like 40,000 people have this, it's super rare. She wouldn't talk to us about any of our test work, which at first I was like, uh, like tell me things but it was because we, she wanted to wait until everything got done and then she sat down with us and had this awesome like comprehensive consultation so shout out to Dr. Mansfield you the real MVP so she told me that I have this disease and I was like no and she started listing off all the symptoms and I was just like like dead on the floor because I like have all these symptoms essentially it's a kidney disease where my body doesn't retain salt and so I constantly crave salt so I put like god awful amounts of salt on like all my food the other day I was at my friends and I put salt on macaroni and cheese and apparently that's weird if you think that's weird or if you do that let me know in the comments so that I know that I'm not weird and then it also makes you crave like vinegar and sour so I love lemons I always like suck on lemons as a kid but 
Um, if you've known me for a while, I am the pickle girl, and it's like embarrassing how much pickles I I eat. And I always like it. I've, it's been my whole life. And like I said, I always was kind of embarrassed by it, but like I literally couldn't help it. It also causes fatigue. I'm like world champion sleeper and it also causes irritability sorry babe and my cheerleaders that I coach sorry it also causes muscle cramps so when I was six years old I had like a hyperventilation attack and my hands cramped up and it was just really weird wasn't too big of a deal but ever since then sometimes my hands will kind of like cramp up in these like weird claw shapes I'm really cool. It's super under-researched, and as far as my infertility specialist can tell, it has no effect on my infertility. I have seen like tidbits of people out there that are kind of documenting their Gittleman syndrome story, but if you have Gittleman syndrome, let me know because I would love to hear your story. I'm being referred to a nephrologist that specializes in kidney diseases and kidneys in general, but for now I am taking an additional magnesium and a potassium supplement because that is what this disease is not keeping in my body. So that was my sidebar of my fun disease life. And I don't mean to downplay it in any way. From what I can tell, it sounds like it's an onsetting disease. So as you get older, it gets worse. And I know there are people that have spent time in the hospital for this, but as for now, I just, I've always lived with this. I live, you know, I'm 24. I didn't know I had it. I'm obviously doing fine. It's, it hasn't really disru disrupted my day-to-day -day life. I'm looking forward to getting into the nephrologist and seeing you know really what this is and what I need to do to take precautions in the future and just keep myself healthy. I do know that with the pregnancy it will they will need to monitor my fluids a lot more as far as like when I'm in delivery but also with like morning sickness it can also really affect how you lose electrolytes so from nausea and whatnot so that will need to be monitored as well. So I also had you know an ultrasound everything looked good there my uterus looks fine my ovaries look fine I had to do the wonderful HS G test N not fun that was not fun <laughs> but I was so impressed with how quick they did it that HSG test they flush your uterus with iodine magical and take an x-ray very quickly in all different areas over your uterus to see you know if there's any blockages they want to see that dye flowing out of your tube so it was just wonderful but very fast so I was very thankful for that after all was said and done it turned out that you know she kind of is putting us in that unexplained infertility category which I'm gonna count my blessings I know that there are so many people out there that deal with PCOS and endometriosis and all these other things that could be going wrong but it still doesn't really give us any answers which you know we would have loved to have had you know the only red flag she put was Matt's morphology which is the shape of his sperm you know they want that at about four percent of all the sperm being like perfect shape perfect size perfect whatever and he only had about two percent but she was not worried about that because that can vary from day to day so she said really no red flags which we're very thankful for so moving forward she let us have the one cycle after HSG which Apparently, you know, your chances of conceiving after getting that HSG test that month after is a lot higher because you just got all your plumbing done down there, so you're like good to go, so fresh and so clean. So we were feeling really hopeful. Nothing happened. I'm not pregnant. Actually, my period came a week early. I've been having like 33 to 36 day cycles, and Aunt Flo was like, surprise, on cycle day 27, which was nuts to me. That's the shortest cycle that I've ever had while I've been tracking my cycles. But I know that that's an average cycle is 20, you know, 27, 28 days. So, but to me, I was like, what's happening to my body? But I'm actually very thankful because then it just meant that I got to start Clomid a week early. And I was like, I think this is what I was hoping for going in to see the infertility specialist was getting on Clomid. One of the reasons is Matt and I really want twins and you know you have a higher chance of multiple gestations when you take Clomid. For those of you that don't know what Clomid is, basically it's a very common fertility drug that from my understanding basically makes you ovulate, it encourages your follicles, that's where your eggs live, um, to grow more quickly and I, I think looking back now on my cycles and kind of talking to my doctor I think 
you know, that long, those long cycles, you know, I was ovulating around day 20, day 22, and I think by the time that egg dropped, it just wasn't a viable egg. It wasn't, you know, the best egg that it could be. So I'm looking forward to the clomid to, you know, kind of bump up when I ovulate in my cycle. So I started my cycle yesterday on Sunday, September 30th, 2018. Of course, the office was closed and I was like, ha. Ah. So literally this morning, and I'm up really early anyway because we have cheer practice at 5.30 in the morning. I know, it's very exciting. So right after practice, I literally was like waiting until exactly 8 a.m. when they opened and I was like, hello. I started my cycle yesterday, put me on Clomid. And I was, again, another big shout out to ARI because they got me right in at 10.30 in the morning. Went in and just did a baseline blood test and ultrasound. The ultrasound, those are always fun. I, I like naively, when I first started going through all this, when I pictured an ultrasound, I had only seen like what you see in movies and television, which is like jelly on the belly, and you're like, ooh, looking. Yeah, that doesn't happen yet. <laughs> they go right up in there. They can never find my right ovary, so she's like playing racquetball in there to find it. And I actually got to go through that wonderful experience twice this morning because I was like, healthy day, drinking lots of water. And then I, my bladder was like so full that it was pressing down on my uterus and my um, ovaries and so she couldn't find them. She got to do all the fun. She took a couple measurements, specifically like my um, lining. And then she was like, yeah, I can't find anything. You have to go to the bathroom. So went to the bathroom, relieved myself, came back, right back up, finding, try it, and she did, she had trouble finding it, um, but you gotta do what you gotta do. They filled my prescription right away for Clomid. So I immediately went to Walmart, sidebar, Walmart's my favorite store, don't tell me otherwise. And so I actually just went and picked it up, they, it took all day to fill, but here it is, Clomid, yay, I've been waiting for some, oh. I've been waiting for so long, and I'm actually gonna start it tonight, before I go to bed because you know the side effects if you if you've done research on Clomid I'm sure you've all heard but it can turn you into a rage monster it can give you hot flashes a bunch of other symptoms and I'd rather sleep through those I did warn all my cheerleaders I said hey I've already got Gittleman's and I'm already irritable mama's starting Clomid today and so for the next week I might be a little more mood swingy my kids were scared I'm looking forward to reporting on that and telling you kind of what that what this whole situation is like they put me on 100 milligrams so we'll see and some people just do the 50 milligram dose some people can go all the way up to like 250 milligrams so I'm on a hundred I'll take the two pills once a day um, every night for five days to cycle or cycle day two through six. So today, Monday through Friday, and then on Monday, October 10th, 2018, I go in. That'll be cycle day 10. I'll go in for a follicle ultrasound where they will see if there are any follicles that have grown. Everyone, cross your fingers that there are like two follicles, two good follicles. Like I said, we really want twins. At this point, 19 months in, I will take any healthy baby. But you know, no one really talks about infertility. I think it's starting to become more talked about, but I feel like the more I talk about it, the more I realize how many other people are going through it. And it's just, it's my life right now. It's our life. I don't think my husband was quite on board with like understanding that we had, that infertility was an issue. I don't know how many of you out there can relate as far as your husband's or your significant other, just kind of being like, you know, we're healthy, we're young, we're fine. And it kind of took, it took a little while, even like while we were mid getting tested, it took a like month of testing. So even in the middle of that, he was like, I don't know why we're doing this. Of course, super supportive and he was gonna do whatever I needed to do to like get myself right. But now he's finally on board understanding like this is a problem and we do need assistance getting pregnant and you know I don't want to be insensitive to anyone out there who I know have been trying to have a baby for years years and years and years so like I know that in the grand scheme of things 19 months may not seem that long to others but in my opinion I think one month is too long like if you want a baby that bad like I think one like waiting at all and like I said, it really has become our life. 
for those of you that are also dealing with infertility, maybe you can relate in that it just consumes you. Like, it's all I think about all day. It's all I think about. And it sucks. So that's all for now, and I look forward to giving you an update on how my Clomid experience is going. Thanks for watching.